poles out right now. I got some with a little piece of lead core line and I'm gonna show you, it's a good little technique that my friend Louie put me on to where you just need a little piece of lead core and you just put it on your regular rod. And then what I like to do on just my regular poles, when, I'm, when it's trolling season, I'm gonna go with a real light fluoro or you can do a braid. And that way, those those are gonna sink to the bottom a lot better. That way, uh, that's that's the trick when you're pulling these lures at 1.5 to 2.2 miles an hour. You want it to get down, and that fluoro sinks, and so does the braid. A big fat mono is gonna it's gonna keep your uh, line floating, and it's gonna be harder to get to the bottom. There we go. Now the lure we're using today. This is the dead of the winter, and this is typically when we do our trolling. And then when you get into the heart of the winter, your shrimp move out. They're, they're gone. So we designed this X shad right here to look as much like a cockahoe as we possibly could. It is a beautiful cockahoe lookalike. And that's one of the primary food sources in the wintertime. If you talk to a lot of wintertime anglers in Louisiana, cockahoes that that's a live cockahoes that's a really really good bait when you can't get your hands on shrimp because they've already moved out let's see if we can get a few more on this beautiful new x shad the cockahoe all right we got another one here this one's on the lead core so look i'm reeling in some monofilament and then you're gonna hear it listen Got a uni knot to the lead core. You can hear that lead core going through the spool. See that red line? Got this one on the lead core line. And I'm gonna show you just how that setup works in just a minute. Same lure. Now on this one, we're using a 3 8 ounce as the lead core is gonna get it down a little bit further. Still catch a trout on the straight floor, I'm using a half. All right, guys, let me show you this lead core line setup we got here. So we got our fluoro leader, 10 pound test, attached to 10 yards of, of lead line. You can see the red line attached to that fluoro leader. And this is a little trick my buddy Louie showed me you can catch them on either one but what this does is you just want to make a little soft cast because there's so many little uni knots you don't want to get a big backlash so this is some big thick lead line there's lead in the middle of it that helps it sink i only got 10 yards on there and then boom another i got another leader to some mono backing And what this does is you only have to let out a little bit of line. It's not like the fluoro where you gotta let out so much. So when you catch a fish like this, it don't take as long to reel in. Don't take as long to get down to the bottom. This is probably the way to go, but a lot of people don't really know how to tie all these uni knots and don't have any experience with it. Like myself, I'm just learning this. And boom, we're ready to go. I'm gonna get this pole set up in the pole holder, get the fluoro pole set up, and let's get after it again. And again, this the lead line, you can use lighter jig heads. You can go probably get down as low as a quarter, five sixteenths, or using a three eighths, because the lead is gonna get that lure down. On the fluoro, we're using a half ounce to make sure that lure is getting down. So I can just set that in a pole holder, take the fluoro line, bomb that out as far as I can possibly throw, plus a little bit more. Let's see what we got going here. Got another one here. 
So this pool's full of 10 pound fluoro. I know that's pretty light, but I know that's gonna get down. And in the winter time, the water's super clear. So that lighter fluoro, it's gonna help you trigger more strikes. But when it's just a straight fluoro, you gotta let out a lot of line. So when we hit one, it's a good one to two minute fight, just cranking all that line back in. See what we got here. We catch a lot of blue cats when we're doing this this time of year, but I think this is a nice two pound trout or so. Let's see. Oh, not two pounds, not two pounds, but nevertheless, decent fish. Again, on that Kakaho imitation X shad right there. Beautiful fish. Let me put this one up and then we'll go over the trolling. Alright, so this is what I like to do when you're trolling. If you if you can use if you can get your engine slow enough, use the engine. If the engine can't get slow enough, sometimes like a drift sock will work. Right now, all I'm doing is using a trolling motor, which is what I typically do. <clears throat> but sometimes I use the engine, put some drift socks out or some buckets to slow it down. But here we go. We're just gonna bomb it out there as far as you can. Now, if we're trolling like 10 foot of water, that one cast is probably long enough. Right now we're trolling 14 to 20 foot of water. So I'm just gonna open the spool and I'm gonna burn the trolling motor. That way it pulls off the spool even faster. Once I get it to, I'm gonna pay attention to where my strikes are coming from of how much line's on there. And on that fish right there, it was about a half a spool was out. Now I'm gonna slow my trolling motor down Anywhere between 1.6 and two miles an hour is what we're trying to, the speed we're trying to go to today. And you can just put the pole in the rod holder if you want. I usually do two poles, one in the rod holder to one in my hand. And the one in my hand, I like to just twitch it, let it stream again, twitch it, let it stream. And that's the good thing about a matrix shed is you can, uh, you can just stick them in the rod holder and they have enough flexibility in the tail to where it swims naturally when you're going at that 1.6, 1.8 miles an hour on the trolling motor. Now, I like to leave my GPS on a split screen between the depth finder and the map. That way on the map, I can make sure I'm at the right speed. And then the depth finder tells me not only the depth, but I'm looking for marking some fish and humps on the bottom. You know what? You're at the perfect depth when every once in a while your your rod your lures bump in the bottom and you see it just you see your rod tip just kind of bounce. That means you're at the perfect depth. And once you get if you're rubbing the bottom a good bit, just reel in a few cranks, get it off the bottom just a hair, and you're in the zone. I really enjoy trolling this time of year as the fish typically is a little the fish is a little bit more a little slower i mean don't get me wrong i've blistered them many a times in the cold and when you get into those january february time of year you're gonna have to make a whole lot of cast if you're jigging the trolling makes it just easier you can sit do work on your phone you can even bring a laptop out if you got some work to do you put them poles in the pole holder and you can do some serious multitasking. And that's what I usually do is, I basically bring the matrix shed office out here. I can handle business while I'm out here trolling because most of the time I can just set the pole in the pole holder. And with these smartphones nowadays, you can get a lot of work done while your poles just simply go in the pole holder. I really like this Kakaho color for this time of year though. This is a, I'm glad we made this. Really mimics a Kakaho and that's one of the, it's one of the fin fish or favorite foods of a speckled trout that hang around during the heart of the winter time. Got another one on that leg core line.
little fish. Not a bad fish. But the reason we fish these man-made canals really in the wintertime is because this is the kind of stuff they like to push into. You know, <clears throat> come November, middle of December, the bridges is really good. A lot of current back there around the bridges. It's a choke point. They're ambushing a lot of shrimp coming through, leaving the lake. That's peak for the bridges. But as we get into the heart of the winter, that January, February, all your dead end canals, such as you got Eden Isles, man made, uh, not, not only dead end, but man made canals, Eden Isles, Lakeshore States, Go Hagen's Canal, the entire Mr. Go, now that it's dammed off with the Chalmette Wall. Um, the Textron Canal, the Bypass Canal. You want man-made canals, they're gonna, typically gonna be deeper. They hold typically less current. The fish like like a lighter current this time of year when it's really cold. And that's the kind of stuff that they like to, you know, uh, focus on. And your depth range is gonna be typically eight to 20, 25 feet. And that's where these trout like to hang out in the dead of the winter, you know. it's. It's hard to locate trout this time of year, and that's why we're making this episode to try to, for those trout enthusiasts out there that there's a lot of people out there that's all they care about is speckled trout. This is one way to catch them in that January, February. Me personally, I like to get after those crappie this time of the year, and that's what we're gonna be starting to do soon. But till then, these speckled trout will do. I think it's a big blue cat. That's what it is. Big old blue. Very common to catch these trolling. These big blue cats like this here. Very good table fare. This time of year our estuary gets filled up in the winter when these canals with these blue cats we get days of catching six seven of them in a day trolling but again not only are the trout like in that cockahoe x shed the blue cats are too we're gonna go ahead and keep this guy because this these things taste fantastic going on there. They got both poles dragging. I think we've got a good one here. Where are you at? Where are you at? Oh yeah, nice fish. Nice fish. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. On that cockaho, for sure. But these are the key ingredients you want to be looking for when you do when you want to try this trolling technique. Water temperature 65 degrees or below. About the lowest I like to do it, 52. It's about the coldest. When I typically am doing this to catch fish like this, it's about 55 to 58. Today it's running about 58. Deep canals, you know, you're not gonna fish them in that 25 to 35 foot of water. You're typically gonna fish them in that 15 foot. But by having that deep water nearby, when it gets really cold at night, these big girls like this, they can go hide out and uh, duck down and get in that deeper water at nighttime. And then they come up to a little bit shallower to feed. And typically the trolling zone is gonna be that 12 to 18 foot of water. Another thing you wanna be seeing and nine out of 10 times that they're gonna be there if the fish are there are those loons. 
Um, as underwater, them birds that look underwater, they're, they're feeding on the same thing these big trout are feeding on. So that's just some of the things you want to be seeing and noticing if you want to put your skills at a test on trolling to see if you can catch them um, trolling like this right here. That's what the size we're looking for right there, baby. That's what we're looking for right there. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. That's when you're fishing the dead of the winter and you're trolling. This is the tight, this is the size fish you normally gonna see. Oh, he inhaled that lure. That's what I'm talking about. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Dockside TV. Trolling the man-made canals off of Lake Pontchartrain. Catching beautiful speckled trout like this one right here. Using the new Kakaho X-Shad. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and subscribe to our Matrix Bait Box if you want to get this new X-Shad in your monthly subscription box. So you can come out here, try dead of the winter trolling, and try your hand at catching some nice trout like this one right here. Until next time... Good fishing.